Google Ads for Beginners in 2024. How to use Google Ads easily, step-by-step -step for beginners. Let's go straight into it. Hi, my name is Ricky Hayes and it's a pleasure to absolutely meet you and teach you about this. This is a, a mini comprehensive course on how to run Google Ads. It is a very simple platform to what it was many years ago. I'm gonna be going through slides and then I'm gonna go through how to actually do it as well. You can follow through this at home. It is not difficult. You'll be able to handle this fine. This strategy is more for e-commerce on a general basis. That is my speciality area. But fundamentally, it is the exact same for nearly any industry, just slightly different per one as to sort of how you do it, mainly in terms of copy creative. But let's get into that. Let's go into the first step. So step number one is create your account. So just to start off purely, go to ads.google.com, set up your account. I'm not affiliated, it's just go to Google. When setup's done, integrate your platform. If you're using Shopify, um, there's a Google free Shopify app. I have integrate a video on that in the channel. You can go check that out. Otherwise you can use GTM, which is Google Tag Manager. That's a lot more advanced. So. Um, if you're having difficulty with that, I would work with like a web developer. Um, if that, if you're, let's say, in an industry that um, is more service-based, um, there's apps, for instance, on WordPress and stuff as well that help with that, but we're just gonna keep it simple. Once that's set up, and if you are an e-commerce business, make sure you have your Google Merchant Center. I have a video on my channel of Google Merchant Center. It has changed, but fundamentally it's the exact same. You just go to Google, um, Google Merchant Center, make a free account, set it up, integrate it with Shopify, okay? There's an, um, an app for that as well, the same Google app. You can integrate the Merchant Center, and then you can push your products or your catalog, so to speak, to the Merchant Center, allowing you to then get approval, because you have to get approval per country of your products, because different countries have different legislation on the Google Shopping Network. And then you can integrate that via um, into Google Ads. Now you send a request from the Merchant Center into Google Ads. I'm not gonna get too much into that, but I wanted to put that there. If you want a video on that, comment that down below and I'll make a tutorial. Once you have that set up, make sure you set your Google to advanced mode. By default, it's gonna set it to what's called simple mode. Um, if that's the latest word, but it's always been generally simple mode. Don't use simple mode. The advanced mode gives you everything and that's sort of what you want, right? Um, don't be too overwhelmed by it. You don't need most of what's in there. The main areas you need is the campaigns, insights, the audience manager, um, keyword keyword um, analysis, as well as billing. Really, nearly every other area, unless you're a super advanced Google ad account um, that is scaling heavily and you want to look at every little thing, then th that's all you really need, right? Those are all I've really needed. And even bigger ad accounts, you don't need a lot of it. It's still cool to have, but you don't need it. All right, so that's just sort of the step one. I wanted to give that overview. Let's go straight into step number two now. Now that you've made your account, you create your brand search. Now I'm gonna show you how to do this in the Google Ads. This is the best campaign you'll ever make. Basically, brand search is using the keywords of your business or brand, whatever you wanna call it. Um, to stop others from stealing your traffic as well as you get high conversion rates. So let's say you're running ads, influencer marketing, SEO, people do search your brand, right? You, when you go on uh, Google, if you're looking for Nike, you might put it up in the search bar or you might put it in the actual search engine as well, right? Because um, you want to go straight to Nike. That's an example of running brand search. If Nike weren't, wasn't running a brand search campaign, uh, a, a competitor at Adidas could take their traffic, right? And it might not convert as high, but it's very qualified traffic that are people that are into that. So very important you run a brand search. It won't cost you a thing. If you're not getting traffic, it won't get in, it won't get impressions, right? It only gets impressions if people are searching for that, right? So that's important to keep in mind. Um, this has very high conversion rates as people um, Google your business, okay? Um, they also do it on Microsoft and Bing, but don't worry about that. That's for potentially another tutorial. If you're interested in that, again, just comment, right? But, um, and all you really need to do is what's make a single DSA, dynamic search ad group, um, following the prompts, it's really, really easy, okay? I'm putting all these here to give you a step-by-step -step overall as well. Um, and you rank your phrase an exact match, right? So there's three main keywords, right? With Google, it used to be a lot more important understanding keywords. However, now they've simplified it a lot more, um, but still you wanna use phrase and exact. You never wanna use broad. Broad, let's say your, type, your business is called Ricky, right? That, that broad could be 
where is Ricky and your ad could show, okay? Whereas Ricky could be just the name of the bit. It will completely massively spend your ad budget and you don't want that. So stick to phrase and exact match. Exact match is the highest converting, the least amount of impressions, but highest converting. Okay, but I've always stuck to those two and it works perfectly fine. I've never really, broad matches if you're running like for cold ads and trying to find new people. Um, you wanna try and add an image of your logo uh, as well. So you, want, you can add um, uh, images as well to search. Some ad accounts don't have it straight away, but anyway, but over time you definitely will. Helps get higher click-through rates and then add a title and description. So Google now obviously uses AI through their own Gemini integration to then allow you to do AI title and description. Um, it'll guide you through the whole thing if you want it to pretty much do it for you, right? Google is incentivized that the more it does for you, the easier it is, the more money you're gonna give them, right? Um, so I run it as maximum conversions. Brand searches, you just want as many conversions as possible because it's always going to be dirt cheap, right? Always going to be dirt cheap, especially if you use Phrase and Exact and you've set it up properly, it'll just, it, it's set and forget, right? Literally, if I start a brand new business tomorrow, this I would set this up straight away, right? Literally set it up straight away and uh, I don't know when it would get conversions, but guaranteed it would and it takes like 10 minutes. Once that setup's done, you never really need to touch it. You can optimize it, but that's pretty much it. And as I said, it will always be your best converting campaign. It's basically remarketing, right? People don't search your brand, okay, unless they know what your brand is. So in some fashion and way or another, they know what your brand is. So that's why it does really, really well, because it's a keyword, and it's your brand, it's remarketing. Send them to your homepage, basically and the rest just flows from there. It's really quite simple, and it works extremely well, and always will. Let's go into how this actually works. Okay, so I'm just in a test Google Ad account um, that I use for Day Beautify. I just like to use it for testing. So we go a new campaign. <coughs> Pardon me. You wanna go sales. Now, you sh it'll pick up your conversion tracking. You just set that by default. You can create a campaign without goals too, but <coughs> I just, it's so simple now, you can just do it that way. You wanna run it as search, you wanna run it as website visits, www, put in your website, your homepage.com. You don't need to put the HTTPS, um, but you can. Um, and I just call it brand search. I'm just gonna call it dash test. You can see I've made some other tests before. You want to go conversions. It's called conversions, but you know maximum conversion. Basically, you don't want to set a target cost per purchase, especially in the beginning. You just want to leave that broad. Um, you don't want to acquire new customers. You want existing. You do want it on the search and display. You want it all countries and territories because it's locked down. Only people that know your brand are searching for it. Are um, you know most likely in the countries where you're actually targeting okay so um leave it as a default language you don't need to segment this but this is like the, the audience manager basically is you can run different audiences um, if you really wanted to but for a brand search you just leave it broad okay um off okay Google has that, but always make sure it's off. I always like to double check my more settings. Best performing, yes, all day, yes, yes, yes. Leave those as um, all default. And then you put in that and see how it gives you a, um, what makes your business unique. You know, pet smart, blah, blah. For the sake of this, you can um, just follow this. So what it does is it tries to find uh, use your website, crawl it, and then get some copy from it. You can change this. This is to purely help you. So the more descriptive you are here, the more the AI is gonna help you, right? Because then what we do is we go generate, and you can see how all of a sudden, it's doing the majority of the work for me. That's how easy this is now, okay? Um, for your brand search, you don't, this is a display path, this isn't a URL, it's just a display path. You don't need this, you just want to, your home page. That's all people need. And as you can see, the Google does this, right? Get 20% off your next order, right? Um, so you can change these, you got 30 characters. You wanna usually put the name of your business in here though, because that's what people associate. So if again, it's like Ricky Dogs, always have that in there because um, that's what people are searching. They'll see your website and that, and that's unique to your business. It'll get far higher click-through rates. So, in all of your descriptions, always try and just copy that in, 
as much as possible. It does really work quite well. With your descriptions as well, obviously it's per business, but you want to try and add your benefits here, okay? So um, you can add something like that, but what I sort of normally do is 24-7 support, 100% money back guarantee, um, one to two day shipping if you offer that. You know, unique things that make your business stand out. Um, Australian owned as an example, you know, or United States owned. Those things make a big difference to a lot of people and they do help. So, and you use these to sort of differentiate it and you try and add about five to six per one. You do that accordingly, but don't be too stressed. This campaign is so, will just sell itself, honestly. You, you could have average stuff here, but it will just work really well because because your URL, it aligns to what they're searching, you're gonna get nearly a pretty much 10 out of 10 perfect quality score. You're always gonna rank the highest over your competitors because Google wants you, wants the customer to go to the place they wanna to go to because they're gonna get more likely of a purchase. So this is always gonna work well. So your business name, I'm just gonna put dog test. Again, put in your business name. You add your business logo, as you can sort of see there, and you add site link extensions. Okay, so you can add site link extensions Popular ones would be um, blog. I'm just going to put them here. Blog. Um, contact us. FAQ. Um, testimonials. Um, I'm trying to think of the other ones. Um, order tracking are the main ones, right? So you can add more, but add at least four. The blog, contact us, FAQ are the most important ones. Um, and then if you have like a big collection, like a popular collection, add that in too. And all you do is you put in a description of what it is, check out our blog, um, learn all the secrets to Ricky Hayes. Okay, and then put in the final URL. Let's say in that example would be to the blog. Obviously you've got a character limit, so you know, I haven't optimized this, but you get my point. Call in extensions, that's other benefits, you know, so 100% money back guarantee, 24 seven support, um, customer satisfaction guarantee, one to two day shipping, Australian May as an example, those things help people click. If you're using more ad space that way and you can see the preview there, All right? And then we go done. Now I won't be able to launch this because um, uh, it's cancel. Anyway, and you get your point, you go next. It then goes to a summary page. It'll get errors, I imagine. And then you launch it, right? Now set your budget to something that on the worst case is not going to absolutely break the bank. Send it to like 10 bucks a day, right? Um, just to be on the safe side. You can see I've got a pretty high optimization score by spending like five minutes while doing this. It really isn't hard. It is so simple now. Um, and that's how you run a brand search campaign. Let's go into the next step. Step number three, create your performance Mac campaign. Now this pretty much works for any business across any vertical. Now with this in mind, performance Mac campaign is a fantastic campaign to make. Um, it's basically Google's accumulated knowledge and understanding um, put into one campaign. Um, before you used to have to run a lot of different campaigns, let's say you wanted to run a uh, video campaign which is not through YouTube you would have to run it as a separate YouTube campaign and that can still work and you can still do that okay if you're let's say trying to sell something specific that you know works on YouTube you might still do that but my experience has been that you now run the I only really run brand search and performance max that's pretty much it you don't really you don't really need to run the others you still can uh, if you want very specific but this has very specific plus it's all combined, right? So this has Gmail, it has Gmail ads, it has search, it has display, it has discovery, it has video YouTube. Okay, because video YouTube is basically just a placement that Google defines it as in terms of Google ads. Um, so that pretty much explains the first two one. Um, it is campaign most brands that used to allow easy scaling, right? It's really, really simple by having one campaign. What is different about it is it, it has ad groups, but they call them asset groups. The reason they call it an asset group is generally an ad group is more limited in a certain campaign, but an asset group has 
images, videos, text, all of it so it can run all of that, even for your shopping, okay? So basically that's why they call it asset groups and it also then combines in that asset group your audience signals, which is basically who you target, okay? So it's important to understand a few things, keywords, audiences, including custom audiences, custom intent, um, as well as predefined audiences that you can use through Google, age, gender, location. Those are the main ones you need to know. And you can edit your assets at any stage. You can duplicate an asset group um, and you can edit the signals and, and that accordingly as well. Okay, so the signals, again, is who you're targeting. The assets is what those people see. Okay, understanding both of those, I'll go through this, but understanding the theory behind that really helps you to build the campaign. I'm no genius. As I said, this is not very hard. Um, and I think you'll find that much the same. On to step number eight. Um, as I've sort of already said, actually, and number nine, you can duplicate, so I've already said that. Basically, again, using the AI, you can do the title, description, logo, images, 20 max, and video five. So that's where you might wanna um, run different asset groups. If you're, let's say if you're a brand, you have 10 different collections, you might want to run 10 different asset groups in the one performance max, where you have different signals, and different assets, okay? But you can run it all in the same. It's similar to like how you'd run a Facebook CBO where you, um, or Advantage Plus, where you have a lot of different ad sets and then you have different ads, right? Just a different approach to fundamentally the exact same thing. Um, I should add, if you are using video, you do need to integrate your YouTube channel under your um, uh, connections, I think, or integrations. There's a YouTube one. You can add in your YouTube um, account. Uh, you usually get your ID, you request it. In YouTube, you actually approve it. So it's all controlled and you can always disconnect it if you ever need to. And that way it has the benefit of, <clears throat> you can do remarketing ads from your audience, which is so important and also build uh, similar audiences, which is the equivalent of lookalikes um, as we're sort of all used to from TikTok, Facebook and stuff, okay? So let's go into, into this now and show you actually how this works and the nuts and bolts of it. So we're back in the Google Ads Manager. Let's make, oops, not a filter. Um, let's make a new campaign. Again, we're gonna go sales because I'm focused on e-commerce. Again, this is where you differentiate, right? If you're running sort of a brand awareness, if you want leads, then you do that. If you want local show, shop awareness, uh, there's a lot of different ones, right? If you're a mobile app and stuff, app promotion, um, you can also run that. This is where you would run ads for like the Google Play Store. Uh, this is where you would run for similar placements, but for lead generation for a service-based business. Sales is e-commerce. Everything else for leads is generally in services category, right? Um, all your conversion goals should come up here. If you have that set up right, you usually for e-commerce only need one. So performance max is what I'm choosing. Um, you, this is where you also choose. So to also, if you're running the Google Merchant Center and you're an e-commerce business, you add that and you have, you should, it should show up only the ones that have been integrated and approved will show up, but that's how you have your Merchant Center as well, right? But in this case, we're just gonna leave it, I'm just showing. So www.dogs.com and you can see how um, Pmax test. You can see how this is the exact same, just some slightly different options. Next, start new. Conversions, we want to optimize. We want to optimize for new customers. We want to bid higher for new customers. Okay, um, again, this is where, because it's cold, you would probably want to target, especially in the beginning. Um, but you can customize this after the fact, right? But I'm just gonna leave that open. I always like to double check. Leave those both on. Those are all correct as default. Okay, so for some reason the AI wasn't able to work, but let's just call it asset group one. Okay, and so I'm just gonna put in um, the best dog collars. All right, and generate headlines, the best dog collars. I do this just purely to help me speed that up a little and just to sort of show you how it works. Dog collars, yeah, and you can see how, uh, Beautiful. All right, 
And you can see how all of a sudden now I've made those headlines. For the long headline as well, Australia's oldest and best dog collar business. Established 1954, right? So you get my point there, right? So you're trying to um, add a description. This is for cold, so you want to think about that. This isn't for people that know of your business. This is more for people that are new to your business. Descriptions, again, you want to add the benefits, right? So dog collars, 24-7 support, fast shipping, free shipping over 100, right? So I'm just putting um, to do that. This is where you can add images. Now Google will give you some images, like some free stock ones. You can see them sort of down here. I don't know why, I have some caching issues truthfully, but you can see add logos. You can add some logos um, and obviously you add your logo. I recommend adding it as a square and rectangle business name, dogs, videos. If you have your YouTube channel integrated, you know, you can see all of these as an example and you can add videos and, and so on and so forth. I recommend integrating your channel, uploading it there. So then you have full control of it. Again, as you saw site link extensions and call out the exact same site link would be things like your blog, contact us, FAQ tracking, audio page, um, call to actions, Pardon me, call to action actually is a bit different. You should put that as automated. If you're e-commerce, you generally want to put shop now, but actually I find leaving it as automated. Funnily enough, I've had some where even in e-commerce, actually learn more actually is done better, right? And you'll see that in the analytics once you've got a good amount of data. You can add more assets, so you can add uh, promotions, prices, calls. So depending on your type of business, I at least add call outs. Um, really, really help. It adds a lot more uh, validity to your business. Structured snippets as well are, are benefits of your business. I recommend adding those too. If you're like a, an agency, a service business, you might want to have calls and promotions if you're running a specific promotion. More options, you can add your display path, but I just leave it blank. And this here is where you add your signals. Okay, so signals is your targeting. Okay, so I'm just going to put dog collar as a starting point. more after um, and these are search terms so you can use the um, keyword planner to find all of these but if you know the terms you can add them in as well and then you've got um, your data so if you have custom audiences and stuff as well you can then do it that way but you also have the predefined ones so you can use in market segments life events and more I don't use life events I use only in market Okay, um, I'm used to call them custom and template in market. So you can target these broad ones. So if you're in the dog, I would type dog and it'll probably come up as pets. Um, see, I, these are really expensive. You can, I mean, it's funny actually, recently retired, the fact that's there shows a lot of people that get a retirement, get a dog. But anyway, but I normally go dog behavior training dog supplies, dog parks, and you can sort of see from there. You sort of know the best ones and you add them in and you can see and you can remove them. And you got also demographics. I leave that open unless you know your demographics very clearly already, then obviously you can control that. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it, right? You can see that it's very straightforward. We go next um, and we put a budget of $55. Pmax test and it shows you. You can see I have issues because I haven't properly optimized it, but you can see 94%, which is pretty straightforward. The only part is that around the assets um, and it gives you other recommendations, okay? You can see how this works for any industry. It's very straightforward, especially for e-commerce. So I hope that has clarified it. As you can see, it's nearly the exact same making a brand search in Pmax. Between those two campaigns, you're launched on Google. And between the other videos on my channel and integrating between platforms and bring it all together, once you have it set up, you run these and basically you just let it run and it does the work for you. That's how heavily optimized this is in this day and age, thanks to Google's insane amount of data plus AI and just various other 
methods they've done to really simplify and streamline their, their user interface as well. All right, so let's go into the final step because I have one more final step. So step number four, this is an informational one, right? And But it's an important one that's around strategy. I can't give you a tutorial without giving you also a strategy. So time and optimization strategy. So the key is to give Google at least three months, right? I know, that's a lot. 30 days is absolute bare bone, but three months is what you want to aim for. And by this, I mean spending $20 a day. So you're looking at a two grand at minimum investment, which I know is a lot of money to a lot of people, but in the scheme of starting a business, it's a very small expense. Um, Pmax can be optimized for remarketing and cold as you make multiple asset groups. So you can run cold and remarketing, but in the beginning, you run it for cold um, and your brand search basically does the rest. Okay, um, I just wanted to sort of make that clear. Always let Google optimize it for you. It took me a while to adjust to this too because I've was i been using Google for a long time and it used to be basically that you would optimize it all yourself and you really had to know. And you still do, but it does a lot of it and it actually restricts you, especially in Pmax, from doing a lot. That's why at times some people I know still prefer to run the original campaigns because you have that greater control of optimization. But my experience has been that the, la the some areas of optimization that is lacking is made up for the fact that you're, you'll find your CPA cost per acquisition is much lower. It just works collectively better. So at times it's one of those ones you just, from experience, you just let Google do its thing. So again, number five is 90 days might seem like a lot, but it isn't once you start getting, once you start getting that. Um, and then basically all you need to do is you just need to test more asset groups. Good asset group, leave it, duplicate it, edit the titles, edit the descriptions, edit the images and see if that one does better. That's it. You only need to do that probably maybe once every month, okay? Um, and then otherwise, it's just increasing budget. If you're seeing results that is justifiable for your business, increase the budget. Um, to make custom audiences, as I sort of said, go into the audience manager and you use variables to make that. I'm not gonna get into that today because that's not needed. This is a beginner guide. Um, if you're ready to scale, increase your budget by 50%. Some people say double, don't. 50% is even pushing it, right? Um, but I would say 20 to 50%. If you're a lot more conservative, 20%. If you're okay with trying and you have to give it some time, 50% increase will spend a lot and it will it will taper out over time, okay? But for those who are more conservative, 20%, for those who are comfortable with spending a bit, knowing that in the short term, over the next week, it's gonna take a little bit, 50%. Um, and again, I just wanna sort of reinforce Google as long-term strategy. There really isn't much to Google strategy now because Pmax does it all. All you have to do is duplicate that and change the budget and then do like a couple of changes a month. That's literally it. There is nothing too difficult about it that anyone can't do it. All right, so I hope that has been helpful. Um, I did want to say thank you very much for watching. If you did like today's video, be sure to like. Comment down below if you have any questions or feedback. Other than that, thank you very much for your time. Take care and goodbye.